When you've been in business as long as we have a company, key issue is how you stay fresh. Key issue is how is it not about Seymour, not just about me. So what Derek models, along with many others here, and what we allow is this ability to kind of have what we call skunks works around here. And that kind of inventiveness, that teamwork with somebody else, making it happen, doing it independently, and producing a great product. It's kind of what you need. I think it's where it definitely took two of them. So you have my dad who is the more creative, kind of the, the tinkerer, and then having my mom who is kind of the one who can look at the, the bigger picture, kind of figure out, okay, how can we make this work? Have it be something that's sustainable. I, I never cared for the business side of it, and thank God for Kathy, you know, and, uh, but she really taught Derek a lot of that. To me, Kathy is the business, you know, and the employees are Seymour Duncan. I've had ladies here working for years and years and years along with Derek, you know, and they, Derek's sort of grown up with it, and they've all showed him something or the way techniques, and Derek would like watch how they did this or that. So as a family-run company, sometimes we might be short-handed about this or that, and if Derek needed to come and grind magnets <laughs> for uh, days and days and months on end, then you know what, he came and ground magnets just like any one of us would. I have been working here on and off uh, from being a small child, uh, worked after school, worked as my summer job, probably the better part of 30 years, um, but in the custom shop for the last 12. We would package screws, springs, things like this. We'd get paid by the, uh, the bag, so I would go home as a kid with a giant trash bag full of parts and a stapler and, and just package parts. That's how we would buy skateboards and wood for skate ramps. Uh, does Derek like to have fun? I don't. Derek likes to have fun. Uh... And that having fun for him often manifested just barreling down a hill on a mountain bike. He started to build on his mechanical skills, of which he has tons. He always liked doing mechanical things, you know, and uh, always working on his bikes and stuff when he's doing racing and everything and uh, all the mountain biking stuff that he did, you know, and then all the motorcycles that he would find and pick up and buy and fix and everything. You know, fabricating truck parts or going out to Baja and doing that kind of thing. I've always been interested in design, kind of on the mechanical side, but then also on the, you know, with the electrical electronics too. He understood that schooling was important to me, but he had a proposal to make. He said, well, he wanted to come and work officially, work inside the custom shop as both a builder, as a designer, work along Seymour, work along MJ, with that quiet confidence that he always has and said, I'm very clear, this is what I want to do. So I've had experience working in almost every department here. I've, I was IT at one point, I've done shipping, um, helped out in HR, um, sales, customer service, production, operations, machine shop, so kind of gotten a, a really good feel for the business as a whole and then also uh, especially um, the construction, design, manufacturing of pickups. You know, I learned to make a bobbin using a hacksaw and a file and a drill. That was it, you know, and I would make my own bobbins, you know, back in the 60s and everything. He's picked that up, you know, where now he's got better equipment to do things with. If we're designing a new active pickup, let's say, then we know, okay, as long as it fits in this type of guitar, we want kind of to make something for this type of customer, we're really, you know, we can just just run with it. Versus if we're designing an antiquity pickup, we know we have these restrictions of we want to use original, you know, materials, we need to use this type of alloy, we need this type of plastic, this type of wood for the spacer. We design, we manufacture all of our own assembly fixtures and, and every piece of equipment that's on the floor, uh, besides you know some of the screwdrivers 
soldering irons. And he'll figure out how to do something, you know. If we need a screw, we don't have it, he'll make it. I think when I reflect back that Derek's attention to detail and his ability to kind of understand what the end goal was, understand what a person wanted, and then make it happen is really what he brings to the custom shop. Because in essence, that is what a custom shop is. Uh, no, no detail is too small for Derek. And to people that are critical about their music, that's important. Has been able to meet uh, more than a four or five fold increase in demand and do so with higher reliability of uh, delivery dates, uh, getting the right product to the person, and that's meaningful. That's his ability to see systems, his ability to put order, his ability to work uh, however late it takes. And people that are dedicated can do that. Again, that strength shows through. He's just, you know, blooming into a great engineer and a craftsman. He it makes you proud too, you know, to see your, your son doing something like that, especially involved in guitar pickups, which I've always loved. I want, want the boys to be a part of it, you know, when I'm not here or Kathy's not here or something, you know, and uh, so it's, it's important that these kids understand where we're coming from. When I look forward to the future, what do I see Derek doing? I see him doing what I wish everybody can do, which is crafting a balance between being a whole person, a whole human being, uh, being a team player, doing the work that they uh, that feeds them, and at the same time not being a slave to it, not being beholden or feeling obligated. That's not a good motivator. You need to do stuff because you love it, because it really feeds you. And I think that's what I see Derek doing, and I love how he's approaching this, this balance in his life.